Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby again here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master, looking into the Word of God, pulling out of the Word of God, practical ideas and practical solutions on how we might live life at its best. This entire week, our focus has been on leadership, and we're just a few days now from closing out the election cycle for 2020, which will set hopefully new leadership in these United States of America, which in many ways has become the United Hates of America because of leadership. And what we have learned this week, at least I hope what we've learned, is that leadership is not having a title or not having an office, but leadership is influence. Whoever you influence, you lead. Whoever influences you, well, they are leading you. Leaders are thinkers. They read, they know all the best practices, they have mentors, they're curious. That's what leaders are. Leaders are thinkers. Never ask God for the time if God has given you a watch. He wants you to think. If you find out yourself, since I've given you all the answers through your own inquiry. So leaders are thinkers. Leaders also are people, are men and women who are courageous. They take risk. They have what Richard Nixon called brains, heart, a mind, a heart, and guts. Because if you have a vision and you don't venture, then it's just wishful thinking. Vision without venture is, risk, is just wishful thinking. Vision plus venture is what leadership is all about. But today I want to talk to you about another aspect of leadership, and that is determination. If you are a leader, You've got to be determined. You got to uh, be like that that character in that story who huffed and puffed and huffed and puffed until the house came down. Because sometimes the house or whatever you're trying to bring down, it does not happen with just one huff. It doesn't happen with just one puff. You got to huff and you got to puff and you got to huff and you got to puff until you bring the house down. That's determination. I want you to read with me from the Word of God, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 1. What a powerful verse. It says, therefore, since the Messiah suffered in a mortal body, you too must arm yourself with the same determination. So Christ, when he was suffering, was determined to endure the suffering on the cross until he experienced the glorious resurrection on Sunday morning. He didn't give up. He stuck with it because he was determined. And Peter says the same way Christ was determined, you arm yourself with determination because it takes determination to make a dream come pass, to pass, it takes determination to be an effective leader. You have to huff and you have to puff and you have to huff and you have to puff and you have to huff and you have to puff. And that's why we should never be envious of people who, through hard work and discipline and determination, have been successful. You see their glory. You don't know their story. You don't know how much huffing and puffing they've been doing through the years in order to make something come to pass. Instead of being hateful for their success, you should be inspired by their success and say that if they can do it by the grace of God, I can also. Determination, that ability to just keep on keeping on. Determination is the ability when you feel tired to just put one foot in front of another foot and just to keep on going. Or as an old minister used to say back in the day, his name was Reverend J.V. Bottoms Sr., pastor of the Green Street Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Dr. Bottoms used to say, a young man, don't you give up until you go up. And let that be your model, that leaders are people who are determined. I know some of you, and I know I watched it, and I still look at highlights of it on YouTube, uh, and that is uh, The Last Dance with Michael Jordan, and how during the early years in the 80s, he didn't win any championship because he had to overcome the Philadelphia 76ers with Dr. J. He had to come overcome the bad boys in Detroit. He had to overcome Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers. He had to overcome uh, Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. Uh, he had to keep on huffing and puffing and huffing and puffing, and he never could get over the hump. He never could win a championship, but he stuck in there.
And as a result of sticking in there, he became one of the greatest, and some would argue, for me, it's LeBron, but anyway, uh, they, they would argue that one of the greatest basketball players of all times. And he got that way because he was huffing and he was puffing. Little, little unknown fact about Michael Jordan is that Michael Jordan got cut his sophomore year in high school. But, coming, but he didn't quit. And many times we quit too soon. And that's why it takes determination. You don't get it on the first huff. You don't get it on the, on the second uh, huff or puff. You got to stay determined. You got to stick with it. Now, when are we supposed to be determined? The Bible says, arm yourselves with the same determination. When are we supposed to be determined? How, how should we arm ourselves? And when is determination most needed? Let me give you some examples. Failure. You've been trying something and you fail, and you tried and you fail. Just because you tried and failed does not mean that you are a failure. You have to be determined in the midst of failure, rejections, shut doors, stay determined. As long as you're still living, you got breath in your body, don't give up, stay determined. There was a great children's writer who had written some books and he, he went to 23 different publishers to see if they would publish his book and 23 times door shut on him, but he didn't give up because he, he was a leader and leaders have determination. And so after the 23rd time of not getting anyone to want to publish his book, he gave it one more shot and he went the 24th time. And the 24th publisher looked at him and said, oh my God, this is good stuff. And they published his book and he perhaps is the greatest children's writer of all time and his name is Dr. Seuss. You Google that. Google Dr. Seuss. Just Google it. Check my facts out. Dr. Seuss got rejected 23 times. Suppose he had given up on the 23rd time and had not huffed and puffed to the 24th time. Then we would not have that famous Christmas story about the Grinch who stole Christmas. We wouldn't have that story. We wouldn't have all those rhyming Dr. Seuss stories because, and now he is the leader. He's considered the leader, of course, in children's books. And he's the leader because he had determination. And you will only be a leader when you are determined, which also brings up another point, And that is you can never tell what a person will be in life based on standardized tests. Just because someone doesn't do well on a standardized test, an ACT test, an ACT, st ACT test does not mean they will not be successful because standardized tests do not gauge an intangible, and that is determination. How can me checking a block determine what's in my heart, whether I have the determination to keep on keeping on? Don't give up in the midst of failure. Secondly, be determined in the midst of opposition. If you are a leader and you're looking for opportunity, expect to have opposition because, because leaders will experience people shut doors. You know, wheels, when they're moving, wheels, your car wheels, bicycle wheel, when they're moving, guess what's taking place on the ground? Friction friction. And when you're moving, you can expect some friction. Uh, when there is a will, there will always be a want. Somebody who will try to block you. Don't forget, lights attract bugs. So when you've got your light going, expect some, some bugs to come. Don't let the bugs, don't let the friction when your wheels are moving. Don't let the wants who or uh, when you have a will and they have a, uh, it won't, don't let that stop you. Be determined in the midst of failure, be determined in the midst of opposition, and be determined also in the midst of discouragement. Because leaders have discouraged moments, deep moods of depression and melancholiness where you just don't think anything's going to go 
right. And when that happens, that's when you've got to soak your mind in the promises of God. You have to remind yourself that look at how far God has brought me and God would not give me the vision if God was not going to make available the provisions in order to make it happen. Sometimes you just got to hold on and stick in there and be determined. One of my favorite stories, in the, and I, I love to tell this story. My members at St. Stephen Church have uh, heard me tell this story so many times, but it's worth repeating about those two frogs that were jumping and jumping and jumping, and both of them woo, landed into a churn of cream, and they couldn't get out. One frog flopped and flopped or flopped in the cream, and he couldn't get out trying to get out and trying to make progress. And he couldn't get out and couldn't get out trying to make progress. And eventually he just told himself, I'm never going to get out of this. So he resigned himself that he would be a failure, that it was all over. That's what he told himself. And that's what he believed. And so he sunk into the bottom of the cream and he died. But that other frog was not like this frog. He was made just like him, had the same uh, body as the other frog, but he was made of stern mental stuff. And he said, I may go down just like this other frog, but I'm going to go down flapping. And I'm going to flap and he flapped and he flapped and he flapped and that frog flapped and that frog flapped and that frog kept on flapping. And when his arms got tired, he kept on flapping and kept on flapping. And he noticed something that while he was flapping in the cream, that the cream started coagulating and becoming butter. And he kept on flapping and it became more butter until chunks of butter was floating on the cream. He jumped on one of those chunks of butter and jumped out of the churn. I don't know what churn you may find yourself in right now. Your churn may be cancer. Your churn may be unemployment. Your churn uh, may be COVID-19. I don't know what churn you're in, but I want to advise you whatever churn you're in, keep on flapping. When you're sick, keep on flapping. When doors shut, keep on flapping. Be determined. God bless your hearts. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Bless your people, I pray today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me. Got a few more days before this year's election cycle is over with. If you're in Louisville, Kentucky or the state of Kentucky and you want to find out where you vote, go to GoVoteKY.org. GoVoteKY.org. God bless you. Don't have a church home. I don't care where you are in the country. Contact us here at Newstart at SSCLive.org. At Newstart at SSCLive. Dot org. God bless you. Thank you for being with us uh, as we go to new levels in leadership. And let's close with our salutation. You know what it is uh, in this COVID-19 period. Stay safe. Stay sane. Uh, if you can't stay home, but always stay ready. Be ready. Get ready. Go out and vote. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.